Hey, um, so uh, I'm going to try to finish up uh, this one project, which was this. Uh, this was a case that I bought on eBay. GMT, not GMT. Um, world time. It's, it has a world time calculator in the bezel. So it's not, for, it's not GMT. It doesn't require a GMT movement. It just allows you to do calculation as to the time difference between where you are and any other place in the world purely on the bezel. It doesn't even need a watch movement in it. But um, I bought that case, new old stock, without a movement. It came with the seal, a, a movement ring, uh, the case back, and that was it. But the um, I, I got this dial, this Lanco dial from the $80 worth of watch parts that I made a video about. Um, and it came with hands. The second hand doesn't work with this movement, but we'll get into that later. And then I have these two movements, which are 2783. I can never remember these numbers. 2783. So I have two 2783s. This one came in... Um, this one came in a watch that I bought for $100 that had a gold, one gram of gold in the dial. It's silly, but anyway, that's where the movement came from. I took that apart because I was going to try to put a SD card in place where the, where the gold, one gram of gold was because the micro SD card is about the same size. But that didn't work out, so uh, I just have a spare movement. And then this movement, same one, 2783 ETA, 2783. This came from um, uh, the $80 worth of watch parts. And then I noticed this is missing an hour hand gear. So that's what I got to take the dial off this, make sure it's working with, with the, this hour hand gear, <clears throat> get this dial on it. There's some issues with that that we'll get into. Get the whole thing into the case and see if it works. Um, so before I do that though, I just wanted to start off by saying like this, the tools that I have here, these are the main tools this is a Bergeon Presto tool, not a Chinese one. Um, uh, Super Luminova, I'm gonna clean and relume the hands of the dial. Um, and then over here I just have the ultrasonic cleaner, some soapy water for cleaning, some cutters for the dial. I'm gonna have to cut the pins off the back of the dial. Some double stick tape to apply the dial uh, because it won't have pins. Um, some Brodico scissors to cut the double stick tape uh, and a skewer to use to paint the Superluminova on the dial. Magnifying lens and then finally because I'm dealing with loom I, I, I always think it's a good idea to check make sure there's no radium. So I'll give this where you can see it. So this dial actually has some kind of, it has some kind of uh, stuff inside these indices, but it's not radioactive according to this. The Lanco dial, I think that little burst was agitation on the tube. Um, so that's all something else, non-radioactive. And then we'll just check this, make sure the Geiger counter is working. That's what a radioactive hands will do to the Geiger counter. See, the, the hands on this are, are radium. Okay, if you've been watching this channel, you've seen that a bunch of times. Just a reminder, be careful about that dust. You don't want to ingest it. If you're dealing with radium, you should know that before you start any project. Um, so now, first thing I want to do is take this dial off. So, and also I'm going to have to inspect this to figure out why that date's not lining up. 
I'll inspect it on the other dial since I'll be switching to the other dial. Um, so with the 2783 to remove the stem and crown you just press on this point and pull. And then it's also this is a more modern movement than many that I deal with. Uh, there's like um, there's hooks in, under here to release the dial. So my recollection is you just kind of having trouble recollecting oh this one is easier to see okay the other one's kind of hidden but this one's easier to see so the way it works is that this little hook swivels and it presses against the dial pin right here so to swivel this you can grab it like this and pop it out like that and then when you, if you put a new dial on it, you would push that back in from the outside. So what we're, we're going to need to, on the other side, it's harder to see it because it's hidden, but it's the same principle. So I just pulled it out. And now this should release the dial. And now you can see the, the gear is missing there. Um, the hour hand gear, but let's let's try to confirm that this is the same movement. Let me get this lined up. Okay, I'm just making it so that the crown and stem are exiting this way on both of these. Okay, it looks very similar. They both have the same number. 2783. Now these hands I don't care too much about. I'm still going to try to remove them. With some care. Hmm. So much for that. I need like a little staking plate, which I don't have to push, push and pull these parts apart. So I'm just thinking how I can do that.
So I have a, I have like this, some stronger tweezers. I have this Dumont number three in steel, and I have a, a electronics tweezer that's even stronger. So maybe I can hold the gear down with the electronics. Okay. So now I think that the I think that might be called the cannon pinion, the center the minute hand gear, but I'm not sure. Um what we want to do is get that out of there like that because I think it's already here okay cool that all looks good now this cannon pinion if that's what it's called Go back with this watch. Is that right? Wait. Uh, that lower gear is different. I just want to show you this. So, this. This lower gear, see these gears attach, um, the cannon pinion attaches to that gear below it and it, it attaches in a way that it can slip. And um, so when you're setting it, you can force the hands to move. And when you're not setting it, it'll be driven by the watch, uh, by the mainspring and the gear train. But on this one, this is more like old style. Um, and I'm not sure that this cannon pinion would work with this old style. Because it needs to attach. It needs to grab at the bottom. And I have some experience with that from the 22472. And it doesn't look like it has enough of a, of a tip on it to actually grab into that gear. But this is good to know because this gear, if this is the same as 2742... I might need that gear eventually for something else. So the other thing I want to look at is the date wheel um, alignment with this dial. And the problem with this dial is that these are the two holes for the dial screws. And these dial screws are just completely different so I just want to make sure that just there's no way that this is going to work even if it did work like this that it would be wrong but see it doesn't if you line up those either of those pins, you can't line up both of them and either one of them it's wrong like the it's off center here, the date window is not right. So in order to use this dial I'm going to have to cut these um, dial pins off it. Now I kind of regret doing this because this is, this is destructive but uh, this Lanco dial was part of the spare parts thing I bought and <clears throat> it was used as a it was in a dummy case as a, it had no movement it was just used for cosmetic reasons um, <clears throat> 
So, no big deal. I want to get that off, get that smoothed down because uh, I'm going to have to take a close look at making sure that the dial doesn't scratch the date wheel. If I get the right distance from the between the dial and the, the date wheel. So I don't want these pins sticking out in case they might touch that. That's probably not the best thing to be sanding in the same place. I've got movement sitting. Okay. Now, mm, just want to make sure there's no dust or as little dust as possible on that dial. The next thing we're going to do is set it on the movement. So I think I'll start by setting it on this movement. Since that's my no good movement, it's safer to mess around with that first. So what I'm looking at is lining up with the date window. This one seems correct. And I suspect there's gonna be a problem with this other one for some reason. 
because it, it was a, it seemed like it was a problem on the other dial. Hmm, it seems okay actually. That's great. Okay, so the next problem is there's this much play And the dial is, so the dial needs to be fixed to the movement in the right position without having any pins on it. Sorry about that. But that should be possible with double stick. I'll put a little piece of double stick here and maybe a little bit here dot here, here, and here, something like that. Here, 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 here. And also, eventually, I might put, I might replace the pins on the dial. I just didn't want to get into that because this, this is an experiment. It may not even work. So to I think I've also read that there's something that there's something that called dial dots, which are probably just little double stick, ready-made double stick circles. So we're making our own dial dots. And I'm going to assume that this is just enough thickness to act as a spacer so that the dial doesn't contact the, the date numbers as they turn. <clears throat> It's also why we want at least three points. Okay, so now I want to peel the, the tape off of these, or the backing off of the tape. One. I, I, I'm, I have COVID right now. I, th I think I'm getting over it, but yesterday I tested positive again. And uh, I've had it for about a week. I think I've had it m longer than a week, actually. I've tested positive for a week. But this, whatever I have, it's not that bad. Uh, I've had, the last time I had a flu it was 10 times worse than this. Okay, so one thing I didn't think of is that this is the special shirt cleaning method. Um, 
after I stick this on, I think it's fine. After I stick this on, it's it's not going to come off again for like relooming or whatever. I keep seeing these these watchmaking videos that, that in the titles they say stuff about super glue. I haven't looked at any of them, but I'm like, what is what? Why why is that everything about super glue? It, I think the idea is that people do bad things with super glue trying to fix watches, and so it's always like somebody super glued it. So I'm doing double stick, not super glue. And um, <clears throat> the next kind of relevant question would be movement, movement ring, um, like this assemblage. Now the real question here also is is this all going to fit snugly without any kind of additional spring What I'm hoping is that this case is actually for 2742 and that the 20 2472 and that the 2783 that I'm using is the same okay so <clears throat> The, oh, so the thing here, I can see there's a problem already, which is the crown. What that means is that the movement is sitting too far back. Uh, so it could be that the 2783 is a thicker movement, and therefore the crown, the stem goes in to a deeper position. But I think this means that this is not going to work. Um, no matter how you slice it. We can take a look if there's anything else that is going wrong here. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to see, but basically, in order for this stem to go in, the the dial has to come up too close to the It's like it would have to be without the dial. Um, 
the dial wants to come closer than that internal bezel. So the whole thing, you can see the angle of the whole movement like that. That's just because I had to, it had to angle like that to get the, uh, the stem in there. But basically, that means that movement's not gonna work. And that means I need to look at actual 2742. Two seven two twenty two four seven two. Now I can blame my stupidity on brain fog, which is great, even though I, I constantly make these kind of errors. Okay, so I can see, I, I, I could have looked this up. We, we should look this up together, actually, to, to get proof of w what's going on here. But basically, this is the, t <clears throat> 2783. Okay. This is the 2783. You can read it right there, 2783. This is the 2472. And you can see there's a substantial difference in the thickness of the movement to the left of the stem, uh, this, the hole for the stem. So we're going to look at this in a little bit more detail, but basically we would have to go dial list probably to get that to work in that case. Um, or use a dial that's, that's physically smaller than the uh, internal bezel. So it actually sticks up above it. Um, but the other thing I want to look at is is this one This one also looks like it's thicker. Okay, so <clears throat> There's one other one other thing I can investigate with this Lanco I don't think this is going to work either, but this is the, the case that the Lanco dial came in. So actually, the problem is this case didn't come with a case back. And this crystal has a gouge in it.
But I think if... <clears throat> that case back almost works, but it doesn't. Um, <clears throat> The, thing, the other thing I want to look at here is if, if I did find a case back for this case, how would we secure the movement in? another issue but it does seem like all the height is correct do I want to so there's two options I can put this aside and try to find a case back for that this one definitely won't work or I could try to do a dialless version of this, or I can move that dial onto the 2740 2472 movement and see if it lines up correctly. I think let's do that. So we need to get the dial, put this aside. Try to pry that dial off of there. I just looked at this because, uh, I just stuck a screwdriver in like from the side. I wanted to make sure I didn't scratch the date wheel. Which luckily I didn't, but I should have been more careful about that. Now I'm gonna grab these. That's interesting. That dial is not clean. So I can see that the, the double stick is picking up dirt from those shavings on the back of this dial. So that reminds me, I should have cleaned that with Radico. And now I should also clean this. So this movement should be fine with a, with a different dial in a different case. I have the original case for it, but, and dial, uh, but I, I, I wasn't in love with the style of those. Um, I think the way to get the to safely get the hour hand off of this, it's it's really close to the dial. Let's see. I'm gonna see if I can get it like this. 
I just don't I don't trust that that's going to go. So we're going to going to try this the spoon thing. I don't know how that got pressed down so far. So there's even a tinier way to do this. I can already see what is probably scratches, but maybe just dirt. Okay, so I want to, th those are scratches, that, that, that bums me out. Um, oh, this is what I'm looking for. So I just want to see if I can kind of burnish out Actually, that's just dirt, so that's cool. So I remember this, this point right there under J was, that was there before. Um, it could be that that little scratch was there before because it, it seems to go up into here. I'm rationalizing, but the um, I, I did want to try to keep this dial in decent condition. It's not terrible. Um, but now what I want to do is remove it and see if... if that 2742 movement, 2472 movement is thinner and can work in this case. Okay, so <clears throat> I know that it, it doesn't work with this dial on it. 
Lord. That's my recollection. I, yikes. So this has a, a movement ring, which is appropriate for this case. I'm just trying to think about. <clears throat> yeah, just gotta move forward. So that, that's because the movement ring have these, you know, holders. Um, next thing I need to access the dial pin screws. Oops, that screw fell out. So now what I want to do is just kind of put this screw back in because we're not going to use the dial pins. Need a smaller screwdriver. Oops, other camera. I want that to be tight enough that it doesn't unscrew and end up with a loose screw in the back of the watch. Okay, so <clears throat> that movement's ready to try this dial. But I'm going to clean this dial a bit better.
So it would go like this. See all that? Okay, so first I'm just going to lay this on the movement. And now I think eventually I would have to tape it, of course, but maybe I'll just try try this crown stem alignment question Yeah, so try this without the... This is tricky, tricky, tricky. Because... Is that the... You gotta have the perfect dial on that. And I think this dial is too flat. That dial's too big. It makes me wonder about just going back to this Lanco. Because this dial, okay, just got to keep things a little bit straight here, that goes with that, this goes with this, but it's the wrong stem for that. <clears throat> Now, I think I looked at this last night, and the problem with this was I don't have a way of securing the movement in the case.
this guy has these case we can look at one of these but I don't think it's going to have enough reach see that doesn't reach to anything To improvise something bigger that reaches over here. This is a pocket watch part. I have several of. The problem is, even if I put something in there, I would also have to cut a groove for it to, to latch into, because this is a smooth wall over here. So it just gets really hard to... If it's not designed... If the case is not designed for the movement, it's hard to improvise. That's one reason why Franken Watch is interesting and challenging. And also not very fun. <clears throat> The other way that movements are typically held in cases is that, see this, this ring is too big for the rotor. I mean too small for the rotor. I, I already went through this last night. There's just nothing, I don't have anything that's the right size to, to hold that movement in there. If I did, I wouldn't mind That could just be the look of this watch. Be kind of cool. And it seems to me that alignment on that crown stem is, is pretty good. Let me just make sure the case back accommodates that rotor.
I want to make sure. See that you you got it without anything holding that movement. The rotor is just going to flop and it's going to hit the back of the case. But as long as the case closes and sits, I mean, as long as it does flop, that's a good sign that once you stop it from flopping, there's enough space in there. But if it's already jammed tight, yeah, there's, there's issues here. There's a couple issues. The rotor is being pushed tight against the case back and that and the case and the movement itself seems to be pushed tight against the glass and that's stopping the second hand. So even though this is almost a good fit, I'm pretty sure when I loosen this, the movement will start running again. See that? So th those are all like just super tight tolerances that are not happy. Very close. So so to keep to keep the hand off of the glass, you'd have to have a ring around the a ring around the dial that presses up against the bezel and keeps the dial from getting too close to the glass. And, and if you had that, then you'd have a problem in the back because the, the rotor will be just the hair more that way. And then this case back won't have enough clearance for that rotor. So again, this is an issue of like the case being not designed for this movement and this movement being slightly thicker than the, the 2742 that the case I believe was designed for. So again, that puts us back at, um, okay, still kind of getting interesting here. Puts us back at 2742 movement. And, oh, 2742 movement is a date movement. So if we use this dial then we have a problem with the date window. <laughs> so I want to look, I, I feel like I've been through this, but I have these dials. So it's one failure after another. Okay, I think what I should do is the I think that the Frankenwatch thing is turning into a big fiasco, a waste of time. 
if I'm not careful, I'm just going to forget everything I'm doing here. But here's the thing that I know. The, the 2742 with this movement ring this is Lanco this guy works like that these hands this should assemble into a complete watch and I should just do that and be done with it um, this is still Possible with the 2742, but I have to find the right dial for it. And the dial has to not be flat, and it has to not be that large. And this, we don't know what this watch was originally. Uh, it just has an insignia 27, 2472 on it. This can be cleaned, the case can be cleaned, this can be reassembled the way it came because this was a, this is an original non-Franken-watch Lanco. And I think that that's really what should become of this watch. So this is a complete watch, this is a complete watch, and this is still work in progress. Now I could... I could use this with its original dial and its original case and that should get working again the only thing is I need a uh, crown for it because I took that crown and put it on uh, what did I put that crown on I put it on the Pierpont Pierpont case because the Pierpont crown was lacking a gasket so let's take a look at this I think that's the solution. Okay, so let's just start doing that. This is crazy. Um, I need to put this dial back on. I need to loosen the dial screws, like reverse everything I did. The only difference is instead of these hands, I'm going to put these new hands on it. And I'm not going to loom it yet. That's the problem. Like I should just do, just go boom, 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 get stuff done. Basically, this whole video is a waste. It, it, it's kind of like a nightmare video. I'll call it the Frankenwatch nightmare. Um, I'm going to stop recording call this the Frankenwatch nightmare and then I'm going to start again and and have a plan that I can execute on and I can make three watches uh working watches out of these conclusions that I've drawn from the Frankenwatch nightmare so that's that uh see you on the next one